Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of my Mega Ancient tutorial. This part I'm going to tell you guys how to implement enemies. So, of course we need to add a sprite first. It's a Mega Man 1 enemy and it's the flying shell. This is the enemy we're going to implement today. You can just center it, at it doesn't matter. But the real trick, of course, is to add it to the objects. That's, of course, tougher than adding it to the sprites. So we can go to objects, to enemies, to make my one. And what I recommend uh, when creating a new enemy is to copy an already existing enemy that is somewhat similar to your enemy and then removing the AI from that enemy. So in this case, uh, the Met can protect himself, but not always and the same goes for the flying shell. It also shoots projectiles which we want so we're going to copy the mat since it's rather similar and we can call it object flying shell. If there's no enemy that's similar to it don't worry just copy a random enemy and mess around with it. It shouldn't be too much trouble. So first of all the create event Event inherited should always be called in an enemy because it handles general enemy code. This line makes the enemy face left. Respawn uh, that indicates if the enemy leaves the screen and then it goes back on screen. Should it respawn or should it just stay dead forever? So if you kill it and you once again go to its original spawn location, it just respawns if this is true. And else it's just dead forever, there's no way to respawn it. Um, this is the amount of health points that the enemy has. So how many buster shots it takes before it's destroyed. In this case it's one since uh, while the flying shell dies in one hit from any weapon. As long as, ni as it's not protecting itself, protecting itself of course. This line is always necessary. Contact damage. Uh, this is the end. The damage that um, uh, that the player gets when it touches the enemy itself, not the projectile it shoots, just the enemy itself. I'm not sure about the flying shell, but I think two is fair. And reflect projectiles. This basically means if it is protecting itself, if it reflects projectiles that come out at it instead of uh, getting hit by the projectiles. As for the following, uh, these are the values that uh, refer to how much damage, sorry, uh, how much damage the enemy receives from these weapons. So, from a number buster shot, it w it's one, it's insta kill. From a charge buster shot, it's two. If it were one, uh, the charge shot would not go through the enemy; it would just disappear when it touches it. So, two is necessary. And yeah, the same goes for the metal blade, ferro shot, and silver tomahawk. Just add values here uh, for how much damage you want the enemy to take by these special weapons. This is enemy specific code. Uh, this is for the met only. And with that, this is not necessary since we are not coding the met right now, and we w we want to add. Uh, different sp enemy specific code. But we're going to leave that blank for now. We're first going to take a look at the step event. Event inherited is once again necessary. And this uh, from here is the AI. So we can remove that because we don't want the same AI as the met. And basically what this means, if global frozen equals false and that equals false, uh, whatever is between these brackets will execute when there's, uh, it's not passed or in any other way frozen. For example, if you pick up uh, weapon energy, the game will freeze for uh, the second before you can move again uh, while it's filling the ammo bar, stuff like that, when the screen is just frozen. Uh, be if, it, if it is frozen or if we are dead, this will execute. In this case, it resets the variables, which we do not currently need. 
So now it's time to program the AI. This is different for uh, every enemy, of course. But uh, yeah, we're going to go over the flying shell uh, AI right now. So first of all, we wanted to move left. And what you generally want there is x speed equals whatever. Um, in this case, I'd say minus one or minus two rather um, minus means it's moving left of course uh, the x speed stands for the horizontal speed that uh, the enemy gets so you should not use h speed this should not be used because it can uh, interfere with the frozen variable so you do not want that you want to use x speed and y speed if necessary and then at the end you put x plus equals x speed and this allows the enemy to move with 2 pixels per second. If you add a variable like this, you need to go to the create event and under enemy specific code say x speed equals 0 in this case, just initialize the variable. Right, so now the enemy moves left. Uh, what we, I forgot in the create event, uh, we also need image speed equals zero or else it will uh, animate and yeah, uh, we don't want that. We want it to be stuck in this protected form until it shoots. Now another thing uh, is shoot timer plus equals one. This is the timer for when we are going to shoot. And once again, we introduce a new variable. so. We're going to add it here, shoot timer equals zero. And if shoot timer uh, exceeds, let's say, uh, 90, that means it uh, at 60 FPS it shoots uh, every one and a half seconds. Here is the shooting code. So we can say shooting equals true. and we initialize another variable so we can add it here. I think you get the drill from now on. If any of this AI coding is confusing, uh, it may be, but if you do not understand this code at all, it probably means you're not experienced enough with game maker language. So I'm not going to go over that. This is not a game maker language tutorial. You're already expected to know some programming skills. But here we can say if shooting equals false, then it waits until it can initialize shooting. Else, we are once again going to get the shoot timer. And here, let's reset it. Uh, this is like waiting uh, while still being, uh, oh, while not being protected anymore. So this is uh, like it's out of its shell and it waits a few frames before it actually shoots. It also doesn't move in this case, so we should rather move this here. Right. So if shoot timer exceeds, say, 15, here it shoots the bullets. Rather, if it is exactly 15. Uh, we can say far ID. instance create b box left sprite get y center these are functions that I added to the engine and uh, it basically just gets the center of uh, in this case the vertical center of the uh, of the object and your object big bullet this is a bullet that's normally only shot by the beak, but it can also be used for different purposes because in this case the flying shells bullets are the same as the beak uh, bullets. Let's see, id dot uh, image index equals one. This makes the beak bullet orange, which is what we want. And id dot angle. Let's check if it's really angle. There, never mind. It's not angle, it's uh, 
there. This is the direction it's facing in uh, the grease. So this one is 180 degrees. That's uh, directly to the left. And it shoots five bullets in various angles. So we're just going to copy this five times and change the angle. Uh, let's see, it's 135. And then the average between those, well, I'd say 157. Um, this is 225 and 202. Let's just put it that way. So now it shoots uh, the bullets in uh, front of itself. And of course we also want to play sound effects when it happens. So play as effects, that's the function for playing a sound effect. Uh, as effects, enemy should classic. Uh, enemy should classic is the sound for uh, the Mega Man 1 shooting sound. And now it, it can shoot and eventually it should also just reprotect itself. Which should, I think, be 25 reflect projectiles equals true. And image index equals zero. And here it should say image index equals one. And also shoot timer equals zero and shooting equals false. Right, so we have now created simple AI that uh, should work, I think. So let's go to our test level from last part and add it to our uh, level. All right, so you can probably encounter errors in uh, your AI, you will probably not get it right the first time. In this case, variable x skill is missing. So, we can just say id that x skill equals 1. And copy that here. So that, that's another variable that you apparently need for the big bullet. I forgot about that one. Let's see. Alright, it moves a little fast of course. But it does work. So we can adjust the physics a little bit. Say uh, in a step event, x speed equals minus one to make it a little uh, slower. But it does work. Uh, one more thing uh, about enemies if you at any point use alarms, uh, these are a bit complicated with uh, the frozen variable. Because if they are frozen, or if the screen is frozen, alarms will still count down. And to uh, counter that is this is a section for AI and this is a section for well if frozen if we are frozen and if you for example have an alarm zero in your code you should add something like this if alarm zero is not minus one minus one is means that it has already executed and it's currently uh, idle and alarm zero plus equals one. Um, because the alarm decreases by one uh, every frame, if we then increase it once again by one every frame, it just doesn't count down. It's a little trick, but it's the only way to make alarms work with uh, 
enemies or other objects that can be frozen. But this object does not use any alarms, so we can remove this. Alright. So let's run the game again. It should be a bit slower now. There we go. As we can see, it freezes when we are pausing. And that's what the frozen variable was for. Now we can try to get damaged by it. The bullets can damage us. And the enemy itself can also damage us. But I need to get it just right to showcase that. There we go. And now of course we want to kill it. There it's reflecting my projectile. And it's still reflecting my projectile. Okay. Uh, we forgot something else in the AI there. Um, Right, right, right. Here, should also say reflect projectiles equals false. Uh, I basically forgot to remove its protection when it uh, prepares to shoot. There, we killed it. Alright, so that covers it for this part. Um, yeah, enemies, they aren't the most complicated thing ever to uh, add, but you do need to know a few tricks to, in order to really make your enemy work properly. So uh, th that's it for enemies. Uh, next part we will be adding gimmicks, and yeah, see you then.